Siente ocho. Okay. Oh, that's not Portuguese. That's Spanish. <laughs> I don't know. What are the differences? I don't know if I can hang out with you for 40 minutes. <laughs> Wait, is it that big of a difference? It is a big difference. <laughs> it's a whole different country. Are you kidding me? I know. But okay, yeah. bye. <laughs> It's already done yeah. second. This did, didn't start well. I'm just gonna say that. It what sounded pretty similar when you were counting to ten. No, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's different. That's that sounds pretty similar. It's like Spanish. You have yeah, like back me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mixture of Spanish and French. No, it's like it's kind of like an in between. Hot, sexy, si, si. it, look, it's not Spanish. It's not French. It's Portuguese. It's his own <laughs> that, thing. That is fair. That's fair. I'm just saying it sounds similar. Okay, <laughs> you know, people from Maine sound similar. Do we sound you know? Canadian? I get that sometimes. You sound like you don't know what Portuguese is. <laughs> That's what you sound. Um, okay, so we're here in New York. Are you guys excited? <laughs> so excited. We're starting off on a high note. <laughs> I just did a big skirt! <laughs> um, yeah, what are you guys doing this weekend? Outside of racing? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I'm gonna meet up with some friends and kind of just see what the city has to offer. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly have no idea. What is there to do in New York? What is there's there to so, do there's, in New York? There's so many options, you know? So, we'll see. Nice. What, are you, what are you doing? No, no, now I'm gonna ask Henry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of like a hometown hero here, so coming back. Uh, you know, I'm gonna see my family. Mom and sister coming in for dinner tonight. Girlfriend's here. Um, yeah, can't complain. There's plenty of things to do in New York. You said, I, on the run earlier, Isaiah was trying to defend Lewiston nightlife compared to New York. I was not trying to defend <laughs> Lewiston nightlife. What, what is Lewiston? I was his hometown. Oh, from. oh. We started Lewiston naming Lewiston. the bars. You haven't heard of it? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> no, I was not defending it. I was just saying it's... Henry was giving it a lot of shit. I had to, I had to defend the city a little I bit. I always have to defend New York, though. Everybody's always complaining about it here. Hey, what was your argument? Honestly, it was just, I was just naming a couple bars. He's like, if you can name the bars, that's a bad like bad look for the nightlife there. Because he's, he's uh, fair, yeah. too. But, Henry, you're not from New York. You're a Connecticut boy. Oh, born and raised in New York. I'm calling <laughs> yeah. from New York. He was here till he was like five months old. Seven so definitely years old. born and Seven raised in old. New York City. <laughs> I was here for a while, don't worry. I know my way around. I got these guys to the army on the subway without getting them lost. <laughs> you had like three phones open trying to like go through the direction of the guys there. As long as you go uptown versus downtown, I feel like you've got it. But you know, Isaiah was walking around like a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> he pulled the most rookie move of all time getting to the subway, forgot his spikes, oh, had, had to run a, back. Run back to the hotel and like pay for a second ticket. It was, yeah, it was kind of a mess. Tragic. It was tragic. Uh... Yeah, felt, felt bad. Made them wait an extra like 20 minutes. We were just <laughs> chilling down the subway station. It's alright. It smells good down there. <laughs> it's really nice. It's really relaxing. Very cozy. Yeah, it's warm. Yeah, at least it's not like snowy, so. <laughs> Marta can't handle the cold here. I can't handle the cold anywhere. She's warm blooded. Mm -hmm. See, that's one advantage we got, being from the Northeast. Yeah, we're it's tough. Cold. Yeah. We were outside running, we're like, you know, it's not that bad out today. You're probably freezing, aren't you? Yeah, actually, it was really nice. It's not like, it's it's cold. Yeah. I'd much rather not to be this cold, but, you know, we had worse. It's not miserable, yeah. I'm, like, slowly growing, like, thicker skin. Yeah. But it makes you I, tough. It makes you we're tough. We're going to see that in practice when she's got the big puffy hoodie on. Yeah. Put up. In Albuquerque. My portable sleeping bag. Yeah. So I'm like... <laughs> Like that, um, yeah. I don't. I don't think that's a good thing. Like it's like, oh, I grew up in a place that I did not see the sun the entire year, so uh -huh. I know how to endure the bad weather. <laughs> I'm like, good for I you. I didn't enjoy <laughs> it. I, I had no choice. I had no choice. <laughs> Marta's trying to get us all to move out to Lisbon with her. I'm down. That's my summer goal. Yes. I'm down. After the season, that's where I'm going. I've been promised a place to stay. Yes. Yeah. Can I just like invite myself into this plan? Yeah, you can, you can invite yourself <laughs> I, into this I plan. I want to go. Yeah, this one is great. What's it's the number one like, thing to do? Um, I don't know. Like the food is great. Night out is great. Uh, I don't can know. Can you name the yeah. bars? The beach. <laughs> yeah, I know a few I'm clubs. Kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. The beach is probably the best part. Yeah, and it's just like it's cool because you have it all. You have like 
the culture, you have like, you know, a lot of nightlife and great restaurants. Yeah. But they have like the beach and the mountains. It's just like, I don't know, it's just perfect. Yeah. I'm trying great to bring place. my team from Seattle out to Lisbon. Let's do it. it might be tough for traveling to meet, to meets, but. I mean, usually you would, you would just go to meets in Europe. It's not that bad. That would be all right. Yeah. We actually, like, maybe, like, we were as close. No, we are not as close. But it's like a six hour flight to Lisbon from New York, and it's a five hour flight to Seattle. So, I mean, you, you know, it would take an extra hour, but you would have sun all day. <laughs> an extra flight, fl uh, hour in the sky, sun all year long. I don't know. It seems. Not, seems not too bad of a trade off right there. Yeah, I think it's a good trade off. So, are you from Lisbon or are you from like outside of it? No, like, I'm from Lisbon. You're, like, you're from it? Yes. You claim it? I claim it. <laughs> Lisbonite. That's yeah. Not like Henry, who is <laughs> an hour away from New York City, but claims New York City. Henry actually lives like in a small little village. <laughs> but then he's like, oh, I know where the subway is. I just got the, <laughs> I just just boy. the street smarts of New York in my blood. I'm sure. So I come I'm back sure. here, it's like, you know, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not as, not as shocked as a little main boy coming into town. <laughs> overwhelmed by the noise. City, yeah, these tall buildings. As he walks around looking like... <laughs> I was looking for the horse-drawn carriage earlier to get to the track. Couldn't find it. Yeah, they don't have subways where he's from. Oh, that's great. Would oh. you would you come back to the East Coast? Like, do you want to come back and live here? Eventually, yeah. Really? I don't know. Connecticut or no? No, Connecticut's a little too boring. New, New York, York City's City. sick. Like, back to all the friends here. Everybody's here. You know, roots. <laughs> Upper East Side, shout out, but <laughs> no, the, the East Side, or like, sorry, the East Coast is nice, but, you know, being in Seattle is pretty good as well. Being in Albuquerque, training there is always fun, like, I don't know where I want to go. I think San Diego is my ideal spot. Oh. We spent two weeks there, like, what was it, last year? Yeah, we were there for two weeks. It was great. In, training camp? In February. Right? They barely got me back so, to Seattle. Barely. Was it a training camp? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like no your matter. femur is, is, is the size of my like entire upper body. It really so if is. you keep your thing up, I know, sorry. I'm just trying to small stay Small market comfortable. goes away. Okay, you know, you just you know, you're yourself sink, at home. You're sinking into the couch over here. I feel bad. You want me to slide over? No, I'm good. You good? I'm just short. You know, I have to choose if I want to like be straight or if I want to touch my feet on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> just have to figure it you're out. Swing your feet right here. Because she's five foot tall. Can't see it, but yeah. I am you're five swinging. foot. I'm 153. 153. Meters. Seven meters? No. 153 meters would be like yeah. 300 it's a meter. feet tall. <laughs> no, it's 1.53 oh, yeah. meters. Okay. okay, so like 153 centimeters. We should know that being track guys, but... Yeah, no. Yeah, but I'm Still learning the metric system. I know. I don't know anything under 800 meters. <laughs> Never learned it. I know that distance easily though. Henry smoked me in the 800 back in the day. You know that? Oh, did you guys compete? Like yeah. growing up? My first year of track. Yeah, I wish you guys could put like a little a video yeah. here. Edit that in. Edit that in okay. where it's just it me like smoking <laughs> Isaiah and the dancer's going, and <laughs> Isaiah Harris coming, and he's about 100 meters behind me. Literally 100 meters. <laughs> it wasn't just me, it was the whole entire field though. You smoked everybody. I, I think you, you got the record, right? It was at the New England Champs. Yeah. You know? I was, I, was, I was an 800 guy back in the day, yeah. but then I got to college and Watson, my coach there, was like, you're a 5K, 10K guy, and I had to fight him to become a miler again. What? <laughs> yeah. I ran 149 when I was in high school and then immediately went to the 5K, but then, then, I, you say then, I, then I ran well enough in the mile that they let me keep doing that. Dude, if my coach ever tried to get me to be a 5K guy, which is transfer schools. There's, that would have been like, there's no chance. Like, I, I, thought about, I, thought about I couldn't do it. Like, mentally, I just couldn't do it. It's tough. Yeah. Being I heard they let everybody run the 800 at Penn State. That really, so right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Half the team is 800 runners at Penn State. Well, that's just like the order of events though. You got, everybody wants to be a 100 meter sprinter when they grow up. Yeah. And if you're too slow, you just keep moving up until eventually you get to the marathon. <laughs> I don't think anybody starts off being like, I'm going to be a marathoner one day. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the marathon, there's there's some people, some young people that want to run the marathon. Yeah, there's some people that want to hurt for like two hours. Like, you know, I feel like there's probably more people that want to be marathoners than 10K runners. Like, because you don't yeah, even think about like, the You see like Kipchoge like, and like Shalane and you're like, all right, those guys are badass. And like, yeah. they get the hype though. Like, the New York City Marathon, hype. all that stuff. They get the Dude. big events and everything. Being in the track. <laughs> I would love to be an elite marathoner. Yeah, but you've got to hurt for like I know, two hours. I mean, you're going to have to get your balls over 10 miles, dude. For it, but like, 
just the clout that you get, like, they get blown up. They do get blown up. They do. Going on the roads is the move if you're fast enough. Yeah. I mean, the track's pretty Or if you're crazy enough. I'm just going to repeat again. It's two hours hurting. That is fair. If you're good. Well, unless you keep choking and you just, it's only an hour 59. (laughs) Fair enough. Yeah. I can see you doing that, Isaiah. Maybe you'll move up. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Danny's a big (laughs) man. coach. Might have to drop like 20 pounds to survive that <laughs> that run, but I always like Danny's always mentioning to me. He's like, one day you might be a good marathoner. I'm like, I'm gonna retire so long before that. <laughs> he says that to you. Yeah. yeah, I always say it takes me a long time to warm up. He's like, oh, that just means like you're gonna be good at the marathon. I'm like, <laughs> I'll never find out. <laughs> you can't make me. Danny's a good coach, though. Yeah, I guess he's, he knows what he's talking about. I feel like he sees stuff in people that like you don't necessarily see in yourself sometimes. I trust him with most things, but yeah, I'm not gonna let him take that. Give me the marathon. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna <laughs> say you might see something, but we're not gonna make anything of that. Yeah, you want to be a miler. A longer cool down might mean that you need a little long to warm up, or that you can be a marathoner. There's only two <laughs> ways, though. Yeah, you know, they make a. He makes us do 70 miles a week to be milers, so maybe that's just him trying to push us into the marathon category. Might be. Once you get up to 100, I feel like you just can't enjoy your life that much, though. <laughs> We need time for napping. We need time for gaming. Gaming. And that's all we really need Priorities. time for. But that takes a lot of time. Priorities. Oh, like if, I, I told you when we got married, there's two things that can never ever happen. He can't ever drive a motorcycle. <laughs> he can ever play video games. Really? You're you not against video games? I'm just like. He hates video games. Why? No, no, it's just like, I don't know. It's just it's like it's a, a. You think it's a waste a, of time? A time wait, wait, cancer. Ask her about Sims, though. Oh, that's just. What? Let's just get over it. She likes oh, one video game. You like Sims? Okay, Dude, so Sims is so fun. I'm going to share the story with you. <laughs> so, quarantine happened. I went to Portugal, like mm-hmm. the backpack. Just, I just wanted to stay there for two weeks. You know, COVID hit, stay in Portugal for eight months. G found this huge opportunity to become the nerd that he always wanted to be. Bought like this nerd book that I couldn't even read, <laughs> whatever the hell was in the cover. And locked himself in the office. And on the other side was me, like waiting for G to be done to play and do something because I couldn't interact with anybody yeah. besides him. So like, you know, our relationship was a little, you know, we got, we got a couple of fights. Test. You Literally know, just test. a little rough. And then G did this master move. He got a new laptop and he gave me his old laptop with the only video game I ever played in my life. <laughs> Sims. Smart guy. Dude, Smart like, guy. my wrist hurt. <laughs> I didn't want to do anything. <laughs> she didn't leave the apartment. Oh, like, apartment. just, only my wrist and my eyeballs would move. I didn't want to do anything. I just, like, I played so hard. <laughs> I think I was playing for, like, it was, he gave me the game, it was, like, Sunday. It was maybe, like, Tuesday night, and they're like, congratulations, you've played 24 hours. <laughs> and I'm like... Wow. Sneaks up on you. This is my theory. The gaming's not for G, it's for Marta. She just knows she'd be addicted if no, she no, started. No, 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 no. <laughs> she'd be joining us in Halo yeah. and all that. I would love that. Oh, hell no. No, I stopped, I stopped playing. You know, I just hide the laptops. Like, no, this is so toxic. I can I can spend my life. I feel like you have a nice family, at least, in The Sims. I had, but they all died. That's all. They all died. <laughs> you know, it's like everything. You have something nice, and then, you know, at some point, it's going to die. I gave up on The Sims when I was a little kid when my character fell asleep on the stove and burned the whole house down. <laughs> I was like, this game is just too stressful. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. That's, that was tragic. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I think as an athlete, though, like gaming is, it's a good way to like stay off your feet and just kill time. Because we have to be boring and it's, you can't be like out hiking all the time, like with training. I, I agree, but I like this thing that it's like, you're gonna be better in whatever you put your time into it. Yeah. So if you put a lot of time into gaming, you're gonna be really good at gaming. I would love to be very good at gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that argument doesn't work more. because we're I can make so it. much more money than I do in track. <laughs> okay, so you're in the right but path. Relatively, if I was as good at gaming as I am at track, I'd be rich. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not rich right now. <laughs> yeah. You're not? We're not that, no, we're not that oh, good. Okay. I don't know if many track athletes are, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. We do it for the love of the sport. Oh, yeah. I do actually love it. Yeah. It's a nice job to have. I to actually, travel. Yeah. If I had to pay to do track and field, I would. 
I just I'm really passionate about it, and I feel like most of the people that do trek would. Yeah. And it was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know if I'd pay to do it. I've always got to do it for free. How much are we paying? That's, that's a real question. Like maybe I don't know. It's a small fee, maybe. I don't know. I, just, I I do love it. I love the lifestyle, and I feel like like this year I've been having you know like especially when I joined the team again because I was like this weird period before you join the team like in, in Portugal and I joined the team and I have like this gratitude moment it's like oh this is so cool I can't believe I do this for a living mm -hmm. yeah I think it's cool I think it makes it like track makes it a lot more fun and you've been in the team for like two weeks now yeah whenever you have a team oh um, definitely just like even the hard like windy long tempo days ended up being like a lot of fun because you're just sharing that with like a okay. lot of other people and I also think like most of our like friends and stuff they're like the normals the normies of this world <laughs> they go to a company and they hang out with 50 year olds and stuff like that like we hang out with people like around our age mm -hmm. same interests mm -hmm. you know talented fit oh, I yeah. think it's kind of cool yeah. oh, I agree that was the biggest reason I wanted to join the beast was just the the group of people I'd get the train with and just how do you like this after two manager. weeks Two weeks, I still like you guys. Still going strong. Give me another two weeks, maybe <laughs> my answer will change. But no, nah, it's been it's been good. Like you said, like having people to like push you to those tough workouts makes such a difference. Yeah. It's, you get closer with people that way too if you suffer together. Yeah. It's like something about just like shitty days, cold, <laughs> windy, hard workouts, like yeah. that's long, how you make friends. Or long drives to Albuquerque, stopping no, in no, Hunted Hotel. No. <laughs> We did we did the drive from Seattle to Albuquerque during COVID. Really? Me, Martin, G, and probably the worst experience of my life. I almost, <laughs> because I almost, of Martin and G? No, the drive, I like long haul trucker is my nightmare job. And I almost stopped in Salt Lake City. I'm like, I'm just gonna become a Mormon. I'm just gonna stay here. I can't make it another eight hours. I'm camping. I was like, I'm just gonna give up. Like this is my new life. And like, you they guys, convinced me. You didn't stop anywhere fun on okay. the way? Or? No. We really? didn't stop anywhere. Was like, we're going straight there. We stopped at cool places, but like, you can pee, I saw, saw like Moab and I'm just like, all I could think of was driving more. I'm like, this, I, you know, this is nice, but. <laughs> How far is the drive? It's like 25 hours. hours. Oh my God. But then we did this thing, like every time we would stop, we would have like a three hour meal because it's like, you know, we, let's make this trip fun. Finally, yeah. So it added quite a bit. Yeah. We also had a little bit of issue. So I've done this trip before and actually it was really smooth. Mm. Um, and Henry was like, oh, should we book hotels and ahead of time? It's like, no, Henry, let's just drive as far as we can. And then we feel like, okay, we can just drive for one more hour, we just book Airbnb or hotel, it's fine. And could you not? There was nothing available. No, this is the border of Oregon. This was Boise. Boise or like the border of Oregon. Yeah. Like yeah. the I don't know, like for like I don't even know, like just in like hours. An hour, like a two hour drive, there was nothing available. And then we, I was just looking to like normal places that I would normally stay, but then Henry was like, you should look to motels. And <laughs> oh my God. We I, found I the can't. sketchiest place of all time. Like, right, well, Boise, it was, yeah. the sketchiest place of all time was like the first hit, and then the place we stayed was the second. The first one was like, <laughs> like uh, you're gonna get murdered. Like, there's a 100% chance. Like, <laughs> even the pictures, like, they didn't try to spruce it up. It was like a picture of like a fridge open with like a pack of like meat in it. I'm like, <laughs> the pool's like an empty pool with like mud at the bottom. I'm like, they didn't even try. They haven't even tried. They didn't even use old photos when it looked good. And then the one we stayed at was like, oh my gosh. Like, it was terrible. It was like a haunted movie. Like you walked in. But like, with a lot of crackhead. Tiles were like falling off. People were fighting in the parking lot. Our window was, was broken. Was broken. But look, it was, there was this huge fight. And you know, like I was, I couldn't sleep. Like I felt like I'm going to get like some skin disease because this sheets, they're definitely not clean. Like I'm holding to my cat really freaking tight. <laughs> oh, yeah, you had a cat with you too? Yeah, I'm freaking. Yeah. And look, this was hilarious. The hotel was disgusting. Yeah. But then they didn't want to, they didn't let us have pets there. And I'm like, yeah, that was their one no. rule. So we, we hide Frankie. Yeah, we smuggle them in. Yeah, we just like, I was just sleeping with Frankie and like mm -hmm. this whole thing goes on on the parking lot. And Henry, he's asleep the entire night. <laughs> he doesn't exactly. even move. He wakes up once. He just lifts his head up. He's like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like frightening. I'm, I'm like, still alive. I'm like, I'm I did go to the bathroom all night, and then I got back in bed, and I like jumped in bed, and I hear meow. It's Frankie. <laughs> crushed Frankie, and he just sprints off, and I'm like, sorry, buddy. <laughs> and then we wake up, like, oh my god, this was so bad, and like me and G were like super scared. Oh my god, I thought I was gonna get shot. Like the window was actually broken. We had like this huge fight. We thought like I don't know. Just and he was like. 
What? It's because Henry's slept, been through it all. It's street well. smart over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I slept well, I'm not gonna lie. Like other than probably getting bed bugs, I was <laughs> out probably getting bed bugs. It's terrible. And then to top it off, I'm like, okay, Henry, we gotta get a long run in, but we just go one mile at a time. So this long run might be like a five mile run. <laughs> we made it. We did it. But halfway we saw a snake and it was terrifying. Yeah, I heard you like a That's crazy like fear snakes. of snakes. I'm like sweating now, just thinking about it. <laughs> really? It's not bad. I had to run like 10 feet in front of her and like point out sticks and be like, That's a stick. But then <laughs> that would scare stick. me more, you know <laughs> what I mean? It's just like, You have to be more gentle, Henry. You can't just say, This is a stick, because I'm like, This is a snake. <laughs> you gotta be gentle. Where did it, this fear stem from? Okay, so I thought I was a nature person. <laughs> because I used to go to the beach when I was growing up. Oh. And I was born in the city, you know, like I lived in Lisbon my entire life. Oh, yeah. But then I just realized that I'm probably not, you know, a nature person. <laughs> and, you know, just, it's a snake. So I you never had like a bad encounter with a snake? It's just... I saw like just... a garden snake and a baby snake <laughs> and I threw up and my heart rate went up and I... So I almost born with this fear of snakes. It's just, it's, yeah. I can't explain. I know it's stupid, but I can't. I, no, it's I, not stupid. It is. It's yeah. not stupid. Everyone has their irrational fears. Yeah, so that's the, yeah. So I get scared, you know, <laughs> but most of the time. I actually only saw, like, I saw one dead snake, a baby snake, and a garden snake. Have you seen any in Albuquerque yet? <sighs> We're seeing I've been on the lookout. I've seen one, and then a few times some people have seen some. And they just yell so high, like it just gets overwhelmed that yeah. I get overwhelmed. Like, oh yeah, just, it makes it worse. It just it makes like, it worse. Yeah. It's just a shame effect. So, but well, right now it's fine because it's cool, so the snakes are like hidden. I don't think there's many in New York, so you should be safe. Yeah, I think, no. <laughs> I kind of like running in the city. What about the rats? You feel safe. You rats? Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> it's like, I, it's so stupid, but it's like, we were running and there was like a lot of coyotes and like everybody was freaking out and I'm like, oh. Coyotes, you know, they're kind of cute. Like they have a leash on. <laughs> be a little puppy. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> and like all the girls are like very overwhelmed, like sprinting, and like it just chill, it's just coyotes. Right. And they're like, oh. Then they're this like, is watch out, that's a stick, and Marta starts screaming. <laughs> <laughs> stick. Don't do that ever. That's I, I won't. Please. Me, I don't want to scare you. <sighs> yeah, just sad. Do you have any fears? Uh, I <laughs> feel like a I'm deep question. It is a deep question. I like to just like, change topics. <laughs> like, like get that. it off of me, someone else talk. But <laughs> open water, like deep open water, like if I was out in the middle of the ocean, I'm terrified. Like in a boat though? Even in a boat, I've, I've never been on like a cruise or that deep into the ocean, but like. This is the, you just I, told me you wanted to go on a cruise. I do want to go on a cruise, but like I'm, you gotta conquer the fears. Yeah. I feel like I would be scared the whole time, but. <laughs> I'm just not a good You're swimmer, so like I too grand to go on a cruise and just be terrified. Dude, <laughs> if I ever got stranded out there or had a swim for my life, I'm done. done. I think most of us are probably done. Well, I guess in the ocean, yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah. even in just like a lake or something, I'm a terrible swimmer. Oh, so really? Bad. Yeah. Oh, you should hang out at my place. We can get swimming lessons there and stuff. Yeah, Marta lives in a houseboat. <laughs> she has a houseboat in Seattle. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, you should go. Like, on the water? Yeah. So it's actually a swimming houseboat. So it's a house that floats really? yeah. in the lake. Yeah, actually, so like you Union. feel it, like sometimes. It's like having a whole house that's like a water bed. <laughs> okay, it's not that. So it's it, pretty sturdy. Yeah, so but you don't you, feel you don't feel any movement. Sometimes, like I have like this like second like windows. They're like for decoration. I don't know how to call it, but they they you can tell like they shake sometimes when like big boats mm -hmm. uh, or like whenever boats go way too fast close to my neighborhood did you want a water house when you moved to seattle no it, just, it, it happened you found it and, and it was, yeah. it's really cool honestly because you you're like in the middle of the city but you get to like enjoy um nature like we have like what? otters eating my plants <laughs> yeah what eating your plants otters oh right really? yeah. <laughs> no snakes though no snakes all right good <laughs> and uh, yeah but there's this thing Okay, this is gonna sound really creepy. I don't know why I know this, and I don't know if this is true. I know this because somebody told me. But uh, I feel like on the early 60s, they had like experiments with babies, and there is a thing that there's dead babies underneath Lake Union in Washington. That's <laughs> that sounds, so, that sounds like a nice story. Nice, baby that's, dead babies. <laughs> oh my god. That's like, is I that should, true? I should not laugh about it. I don't know. I, oh, I can't, I can't reveal my source. <laughs> Washington and like Union is connected, so maybe. Um, and I'm saying that because you're not selling me on coming swimming at your house. 
<laughs> I Look, think I'm gonna pass. But okay, let me give you something that will make you happy. It may, it, it, it might encourage you to go. Okay. So G dropped his bike in the lake by accident when he was trying to enter my house. <laughs> and thank God I didn't call Henry because Henry would think this is a great idea and I canceled this idea really quick. So it was we were like, gonna scuba dive down. <laughs> terrible idea. We have no idea how that shit is, how deep that is. I'm like, I heard there's dead babies there. Maybe there is other things. No, like that's a hard no. And she was very upset and he's a minimalist. It's a guy, so I was like, no, but like, I only have three shirts and my bike. I want my bike. <laughs> so we hired divers. No and there's way. no dead babies underneath it's my deep, house. It's confirmed. It's, like, okay. it's confirmed. It's confirmed. Okay. How, was it like 15 meters deep though? Like, it was deep. It's like 25 meters deep. That's crazy. It's so we wouldn't have been able to make that dive down. G still thinks he would. <laughs> well, that's like you're super certified, feet. don't you have to be? No, like, that's, that's my like, goal for next summer. They, is they, to they go scuba with their suit. snorkels like <laughs> <laughs> Me and G are going to go get scuba, scuba certified. You could probably do it in, in Lisbon, right? Yeah, you can do it in Lake Union. You should yeah. do it too. Scuba Just do, yeah, that would be a great, great way to overcome your fear. One of my I'm friends convinced it. me to do I'm it. It sounds pretty awesome, honestly. And then when, to get open ocean, you go out into uh, the Puget Sound and you go into like shipwrecks <laughs> out there. That seems like his biggest fear. <laughs> honestly, it seems kind of cool. Like as long as I'm not swimming to like survive. Mm -hmm. You got the like, little flippers yeah, and stuff be, and just going down fine. and up. I feel like I can do that. Yeah, and you can just like, you know, there's this thing that you just put here and you just get Yeah, out it's like a little buoyancy thing yeah. that you can inflate so you float around. I'm sold. Yeah, we'll get you I think that's there. a great way to like slowly like overcome your fear. Yeah, I go to like pet stores and I see snakes through the window, or like I go to the <laughs> zoo. Just stares at them. Just like, sup? <laughs> Enemy number one, right there. All right, Henry, run to your fears. Heights, dude. Heights. I hate heights. Really? I hate flying. Oh, I didn't know that. And I hate heights, so I've chosen a pretty tough job for it. But I like got over it. Like when I was in college, I would like freak out on planes, be like sweating and like. And my like trainers were like, oh, do you need like medicine or something for this? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> I'll be able to get through it. So the more I flow, the more comfortable I've gotten, but still I don't like yeah. heights. Yeah. yeah. I think like there was one flight, we got back into DC and it was so turbulent. Like the plane was rocking, like shifting. I kind of just like resigned to dying. I'm like, <laughs> whatever, it's happening. Sound, like everybody else is down. freaking out, but I'm like calm because I've already given up. Oh, and then we sense. landed and like everybody starts like clapping and I'm oh, like, God. All right, well, I faced it, I guess. So I'm not, <laughs> that's not as they bad. They were clapping for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is like everybody on the plane is like cheering. I'm like, Dude, so you know it's tough when this happens. What? When was this? You said it was in college. It was in college. Like the plane, like we had to go into an auxiliary runway at like Reagan International, and yeah. like it looked like we were just heading towards the airport. There was like no runway. I'm like, I'm looking out the window. I'm like, where the hell are we going? I'm like, we're going into a grass field, and like the plane's shifting and like bumping, and it was Whoa. crazy. Oh, that was pretty scary. So. That's scary. Ever since then, I think I've gotten better. Yeah. Now I don't really mind that much. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> so, have you ever been to one of like the, you know, the Rock or Empire State Building in New York? Oh uh, no, no. I would, I would do that, but like roller coasters, no chance. Yeah. <laughs> Drop towers, no chance. Like we'd go on school trips when I was in middle school and whatnot, and I would just go on the spinny thing. That, like <laughs> sticks you to the oh, wall. Dude, those things. And all my so friends fun. like, come on, let's go on the roller coaster. I'm like, I'm just gonna stick here all day. <laughs> don't worry about me. You guys have fun. Yeah. Drew's like. His, one of his goals in life, I think, is to get me to go on a roller coaster because he's like obsessed with. Oh, there's there's some amusement park in Ohio, mm -hmm. and he oh, won't stop talking about I've it. I've heard about it. Yeah, too. he's like yeah. it's like the thing he's most passionate about in his life. I'm like, <laughs> you hear him talk about track, and he's like, yeah, so so. You hear him talk about this roller coaster, <laughs> and he like goes on for hours, and he's like, you're gonna come, we're gonna do this. I'm like, I'm not. There's no way I'm gonna do it. You can't convince me. So, but yeah. Brandon's wedding's gonna be there, and that's like they think his wedding's at the amusement park. No, not <laughs> <laughs> it's at the roller coaster. Yeah, no, <laughs> if you want to be a part yeah, of it, you gotta be in. It's there. in Ohio. Oh, okay. And that they think sense. that they're gonna like get us to go to the, the amusement park, and I'm just gonna disappear. There's no chance. Just re just eat your cotton candy. And yeah. Just hold everyone's. I'm happy up. just helping. Yeah, home bag, walk around, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so what was the most embarrassing thing you've done last year? Oh, that's a tough question, Marta. I don't even know if I want to go okay, over this. I'll give you one second. How about we talk about your Olympic experience? Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> he thinks about okay, that. Okay, look, okay. I'm Wait, gonna... she has a good uh, embarrassing story from the Olympics. Oh, oh yeah, crap. perfect. Yeah, so you just walked into this trap. You sign yourself up. Oh, okay. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so my embarrassing story. I think I, I told you. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you this. You. 
So, finished my race. My Olympic experience was actually really great. Um, like, I just feel like a lot of my mindset was allowed me to ex experience my Olympic experience. One of the things, that this is not part of the embarrassing part, <laughs> I'm just giving some context. <laughs> and one of the things that I feel at Olympic Games, like, most of the athletes leave disappointed and mm -hmm. very frustrated and very depressed, which is so scary because you just achieved this high in your life and sometimes you're just looking for the next big thing, you're not really able to enjoy where you are right now. And 2016 was like that for me. 2021, 2020, I told myself, like, if I'm not going to be able to enjoy my journey, be present, I am not going to keep doing track and field. So, very, I, I succeed. I was very present. I ended up, like, doing really well there. It was, like, my best uh, performance in the world, uh, like, big event. Um, so, very happy. No celebrations in Tokyo. There's You couldn't leave the village, as you know. Yeah. I had a room for myself. And during the day, I realized, like, so you live in the village, and like we have like just buildings in front of buildings, but all the, the windows, they, 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 they were mirrored. Mm -hmm. So like we couldn't see inside the rooms. Mm -hmm. So I'm done with my Olympic experience. I have no one to celebrate, so I put my headphones, and I'm breaking it down <laughs> on my own, like 45 minutes dancing. But 45 minutes just like <laughs> I am like already sweating. I'm really going and just like drinking, you know, my powder, like Gatorade and stuff, like just really having the time of my life alone. <laughs> and of course, like any girl, you know, like, since I'm alone, I need to see myself, you know, dancing. So I open the curtains and I can see my reflection in the windows. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like dancing for 45 minutes with my headphones and then my headphone dropped and I hear noise from the outside and so the building in front of me, Team Korea, had like 14 people in the balcony <laughs> seeing the show of me dancing no. and I didn't know they could see inside so that was a very 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 embarrassing they probably loved it though. i also the, the scary thing is like <laughs> i have no idea for how long they were there because i was literally did there. you talk to anyone after no, no i just hide <laughs> i like yeah. i drop my hand i push the curtain <laughs> and i'm like mom can you pick me up <laughs> oh yeah. that's so funny that was really sad <laughs> that's embarrassing but it's funny at the same that's time funny. Yeah, <laughs> well, it could have been worse. Like, I was like with my, my gear on, I wasn't like butt naked. Yeah, that would be tragic. Oh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, I, I think that, I, that sums up my Olympic the experience. Of the Olympics? <laughs> no, that was the most embarrassing thing. So, I gave yeah. you a few minutes. What about, about you guys? What was the most embarrassing thing? I wasn't prepared for this question, so I got no idea. Like, oh. I don't get embarrassed of that easily. So oh, I should have known. Part of my hard questions. I don't dance by my by myself very often, so I haven't had the risk of that. But he doesn't um, admit to dancing by himself. You that often. Dance. Probably I like to dance sometimes by myself. <laughs> I don't know why, but I know, yeah, I'm aware of my surroundings. <laughs> I was too. I could swear, like I couldn't see anything during the day. Like it was mirrored. Damn. That's alright. They probably enjoyed it. It wasn't. It wasn't like really bad. It was just bad enough to be like, okay, I should not do that. Let's <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> Let's sleep. Let's don't don't celebrate. It's okay. Um, we could keep thinking about embarrassing things, but we could also. I mean, you have the Olympic experience. Me and Isaiah, we just have the Olympic trials experience. Yeah. <laughs> so what about that? We, yeah. Well, you were fourth. Yeah, How's it been, so. Kind of stings. Yeah, stings a bit. Overall, kind of like what you said about the Olympics, though, like just being present and enjoying it. I kind of feel like I experienced that while I was out in Oregon. Leading into it wasn't an ideal build-up. I guess no one probably has an ideal build-up. It's, it's tough to, you know, have a perfect training block in this sport. Yeah. But just getting onto the line, because at one point I didn't even think I'd be able to start the race. I was just, like, very happy about it. Mm -hmm. Getting fourth obviously stings no matter what, first one out, but I enjoyed it and I'm, it's like, I still have another chance, so kind of just, you know, have your have your hour to be upset and then just keep moving yeah. forward. You gotta have short-term memory in this sport. Yeah. But, yeah, I enjoyed it overall. How about you, Henry? I thought it was a fun time, like, same type of thing. It was a, that was a hectic, like, Danny all year, like, he prepared us 
he would he like wouldn't even call it the Olympic trials. He would just be like he would call it the meet in Oregon or like the U.S. champs, like because he didn't want to build it up to be more than it was. Yeah, I like that. Like it's just like another U.S. championship, but obviously there's more behind it. But at the same time, you can't really put too much more focus right. on it. Yeah. So I was expecting it to be like super overwhelming. Um, and honestly, I got there and I was just like wait, like really chill. I thought like you know, I've got a good chance of making the team. I've run well this year, like. And then it's kind of like my mindset, I was working with the sports like last year for the first time and my mindset was like, I've done everything I can, so there's not really any point to worry right now. Like, yeah. I can't turn back the clock, I can't do more mileage, I can't do workouts better. I'm like, this is who I am at this moment. If I make it, I make it. If I don't, well, yeah. I'm still here, I'm doing all right. <laughs> like, it was a good experience still, like, it was fun. I mean, one of, last year was one of my best years ever and like, came off like having COVID and all this stuff, which definitely made it harder. Um, so, you know. Yeah, in March you were like very unsure about like how COVID yeah, you I mean, may, might I ran like 343 on my first opener and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, this might have been like 10 seconds faster. Yeah, than Isaiah had it too and like we both kind of had like the experience where like I went and got like an EKG, I got like my lungs tested, I'm like something's yeah. wrong and yeah. then it just took a while to get better and so I was pretty honestly grateful for the entire year last year yeah. and then I mean, the Olympic trials, same thing as like both of you were saying, like the at the final on the start line, I like took a set, second to myself and I'm like, I'm really in the final of the Olympic trials. Like took a deep breath, looked around, like the lights are on, people are cheering. And I'm like, this is a cool experience. Yeah. Like yeah. if you can't appreciate this, what are you going to appreciate? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it was, you know, there's always weird experiences. Like we had to get our race pushed back because of heat and things like that. And just like try not to let it. Oh yeah, you guys have the heat wave. Dude, I was like, they, they pushed it back 20 minutes before we were going to warm up, like, as if they didn't know the entire, <laughs> Time I don't know, that months that, that it was going to be that hot. Yeah. And I was ready. It was like, somebody said it was like 140 degrees on the track. Oh my God. And it was like 115 degrees. Yeah. And I was like, I was ready to warm up. I had my ice vest on. I'm like, all right, somebody might die on the track. And like, I hope it's, <laughs> it's not, not me. <laughs> not even, I didn't, I wasn't confident it wasn't going to be me, but I was like, I hope it's not me. <laughs> And like I was ready to go, and then they called it off. So that was kind of hard to yeah. readjust. Yeah. Go home. Like how far did they push back? Just a day? No, they pushed it back like Tonight. five hours. Oh, it was that night? Okay. Yeah. So it was even like worse almost than another day because like you had to get back to the hotel. Like I had already chugged both my coffees, and so I'm like in bed like I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's kind of like wearing off as the time the other race comes, and I like chug two more, and now I'm just like anxious and have like heart palpitations because I had like seven thousand milligrams of caffeine. But. <laughs> I think it's cool what you were saying about the preparation and I think that's part of my mindset too leading to the Olympics is like you have to earn it so like whatever you did in training you just gained skills and you have all of this like toolbox now but sometimes you don't even need a toolbox you just need your hands so you just have to be present to know like what to do in the moment that's why there's three rounds you know mm -hmm. there's why that's why there's three medals like everyone has to go through this and everybody has to earn their spot but then, on the other side, I feel like you as, a, you, you as a professional athlete, you have this like entitled thing about like, oh, I deserve it because I gave up on so many things. And like, you don't deserve shit. You got to go and earn it, which yeah. is like something that, you know, as athletes, I feel like our ego is always very present. And we just like, no, no, I really, I, I really want it. It's not, you know, everybody else really wants it too. So, um, but I think there is one thing that it's like, you should be very proud of the journey. And that no one can take away from you. Like, so your toolbox leading up to it, like what you were saying, you should be totally confident. If you put the work, if you did all those sacrifices, you should be very proud and you should celebrate that. The result, you know, it's not gonna be a direct translation from all of your work, but guess what? Everybody else worked there worked really hard to you. Yeah. So I really wanted to find that in between. You know, I, I feel like my first Olympic Games was all about impressing my 12 year old self and like, oh, you can do everything. And the second Olympics was about impressing my 40-year-old self. Like, look how you enjoy your own journey. Look how appreciative you were. How you celebrate the people that matter. Not anybody that you don't know and you don't care. And they're going to say things that it don't really matter. So I think that was a big shift for me last year. Like, COVID and, like, coming out of, like, just 2019 was weird for me. And then 2020, COVID. 2021, I still had a lot of anxiety and like a lot of mental pressure that I had to figure it out if I, if I still wanted to be in the sport. And I feel it, it, and again, like also I wasn't doing really well in April. I run 420 on my opener. 
that was not in the mud. That was a 15 millimeter race. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was just tough. Like sometimes it's like, whoa, like where I wanted to be and where I am. Mm-hmm. But you just gotta like accept and like work with this like ego and like your body also like waiting, like you're saying, just like, sometimes your body is not responding to all of your demands. You just gotta, you know, like listen, wait and work with it instead of forcing it. So last year for me was a little bit of, you know, a dance, yeah. figuring it out, like what's the next move, you know, not, not trying to step on my body's foot and just cooperate with my body and my mind. Yeah. Right? Were you at like a mental block at that point when you just weren't running well or was it I were feel you injured? Like, was it just more so just a mental? So injury, I think it's always a big, t- like it's always a big tool mm-hmm. on you because it just, you know, like you're used to this thing about like success happens naturally because you put the work and the and, you know and the results came out and then when you have an injury you just break the cycle and you have to get back to it mm-hmm. but you also have to change your mindset because you're not going to start where you left you're you're starting as somebody that accomplished all of those things but it was hurt so i think looking back there was things that i don't even realize but just like really understand what is my ego and what is my passion was mm-hmm. very important to me to be able to keep doing track and field at a high level yeah I think the mental side of things in, in this sport is so crucial. Like the first time I really ever experienced something like that was back in 2018. It was my first time dealing with like a real injury that took me out for a couple months up until then. You know, you're just running, you're young, you can do whatever and you don't get hurt. Yeah. Um, so I, like, I, I like track, but it was just like, oh, it's just something I do, I'm good at it, whatever. The moment like I had a cross train for three months and it got taken away from me, that's when like, you know, you have to reflect and like, do I really care about this? And like, once you realize like, this is something I'm like passionate about, I think it makes like those training blocks when you're just grinding it out, like you guys were talking about earlier, those tough windy days, it just like, you can enjoy those moments because you know, at like any period, it can get taken away from you. Yeah. And then when you get the races, it's like, all right, this is the fun part. Like I should enjoy this. Like yeah. I just, you know, this is what all my hard work has built into. And I feel like when you approach it with that mindset, you just like run better. Like you have to be happy to run well. It yeah. doesn't matter how fit you are. If you're not enjoying it, like you're not gonna run well. This sport is so mental and like, I think most people at our level get that, but I don't think like a lot of people at the younger level get that. Yeah. That's something like, even at the kids clinic the other day, I was trying to like tell those kids like, mm-hmm. these kids came out and like, what's the secret? Like what's the one secret? I was like, there's no secret. It's just like be consistent, do those things, like everything right for, a while and like have fun and you'll run well like just yeah you just can't like stress yourself out too much like i don't know it seems like that should be an easy thing to do but like that's the hardest thing to do in check and yeah. like the more you realize it the more like you've been through check you see people like the easiest thing to do is to push harder mm-hmm. and the hardest thing to do is to relax yeah that's like true. everybody in our, our you know stage in our careers or even as a pro is able to push themselves harder but you see people get into trouble when they just can't let go a little bit. Like, all right, take it easy, run a little bit less, eat a little bit more, like, have fun. That's the hard thing. Not like, oh, do more mileage, grind, put your head down. It seems counterintuitive. I think that's why. It's like, all right, if I work hard, I'm gonna be better. But like, you have to recover. You have to give your body those times to to recover. (laughs) I read this book last year, and it was telling me like the story of this uh, Iron Man, female world champion, and her training I, mentality was do the least amount you can to be good. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> like, not only like, her it advice. might sound lazy, like oh, if I could do less, that would be great. Okay. But at the same time, like, there's something to it. She's like a seven-time world champion, and like, she's not lazy. She's still training, but like, you can't be lazy as an Iron Man. Athlete. Is, yeah. is that where doing the minimum. why I'm running 70 miles to run a mile comes from? Well, <laughs> that's why I run six days a week now. So. <laughs> Last year I was doing like seven days a week. I was getting like you know a little bit tired here or there, like just never, not really taking that many breaks. And like I talked to Danny in the off season or after the last race and pre last year, and I'm like, listen, I want to like have a day to myself where I can kind of do whatever I want, whether you know some interest that I'm mm-hmm. following or just relaxing, play video games, whatever. Like yeah. we went on a hike with Chief, yeah. Isaiah's dog, and like just things like that where you don't have to think about running. And I think in the long run that helps you run better, better than doing another day of recovery or getting more miles in like where you think you might be getting more fit but really it's just kind of like you know for me it grinds me down a little bit yeah. if you just never take i time. agree also like what you're saying i think like for me something that really helped me and you kind of said it in the different words is like realizing that running fast doesn't make me happy but being happy is what makes me run fast just mm-hmm. like 
as being a person as a whole that also runs instead of like I am a runner mm -hmm. and like I am me I'm not a runner mm -hmm. I'm more than running and the team also plays a huge role on it because I think when you're like struggling but like you have a toxic environment or like you're always having like microaggressions or you're alone it's just like hard for you to also be aware of other things like deep into you and when you're like in a very like good team you also have this opportunity to just learn from others mm -hmm. and like share vulnerabilities and I don't know like it was really cool last year was tough but like I don't know like I shared a lot of my journey with Henry and just like it's also really fulfilling uh not just my own personal growth but also seeing like Henry struggling and seeing him like running so well in the summer and make it so natural when I like I know it's it's of course it was natural but it took a lot of work yeah. it took a lot of persistence and, and I think the team also brings that you know like you share the same things like we all we all shape for the same things we all we all have pressure we all do the same sport we all know we all, we know what it takes it's cool to have a team to like celebrate but also share those things and mm -hmm. That was really, the, uh, last year was really special. It's nice. We should wrap it up. Wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to ask them one question. All right, okay, last, last question. One? Okay, it's about Danny. Okay. okay. Since I don't know Danny too, too well yet, <laughs> I want each of you to either tell me like one good story, like your best moment with Danny, I guess, or like an embarrassing story about him. Give me something. You go, Henry. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was saying like, with Danny, you know, he's very quiet, but he sees a lot of things. Like, so when you talk to him in your one-on-one -on -one meetings, mm -hmm. something's bothering you or there's something going on, he knows about it. So it's cool to be with a coach that, you know, he cares a lot. He's got a great training mentality. He's like, he's always done everything right, which I really appreciate. And like, he knows you as a person, even when sometimes you think, you know, maybe he's, he's missed this. Like, mm -hmm. He's like a fly on the wall a lot of times. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's just there, yeah. Yeah, he knows, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I think like, Danny is a scientist, that's the thing. Like he's always researching. He's always like he invests a lot more uh, than sometimes like I could like sometimes you think. Because mm -hmm. he's not an extrovert. He's not always like just dumping information at you, but he's like always analyzing. And I think that's just um, for me training with Danny, of course like you have to build confidence with a coach. But it's easier when you see like he's just so like science based in his training. Mm -hmm. But he also like really, he knows how important it is to know the athletes and like know like your communication style, like understand like your sleep, your habits, like what makes you happy. Um, and I think like he, he's really good uh, about just like having this big picture around us and he really cares about, about us, um, not only with running, which I think it's really cool, but it is not like super extrovert. And yeah. sometimes it's funny because yeah. like Henry just finished like, oh, he was not even like, I won my first like, uh, you know, like pro race. And you know, then he didn't was, seem that excited. Like, oh, you seem very excited to me. So like sometimes it's just like, it may be like, he's just like super excited like around your team. It's like, oh my God, Henry is running so well. Or like, <laughs> and then there's like, oh, I didn't, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> I was like, no, but he's really excited. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. I don't know, it's just like, it's fun. I think like he also gets very nervous. It's really fun. Like, <laughs> you should look at Danny whenever we're racing. So you know he cares. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, he's like as nervous as we are. Yeah. yeah. Probably more nervous, honestly. Uh huh. So it's it's kind of cool. Like um, I feel like it's really like a team job, and Danny like really cares about the team as a whole, but also about like ourselves as an individual. Like I'm, I've done multiple like workouts. Um, like Carissa's not doing the same thing as I was because we're just different individuals and. Also, the conversations we have, like Danny, after like a while, he kind of like figuring it out, figure it out how I, you know, behave, and sometimes he gives me like the small cues, and I just hold on to it, and mm -hmm. I see like huge growth from it. Yeah. So I, I like that. He doesn't like necessarily will talk a lot, but everything he says is like on point, and it really helps it. you to like yeah. grow and make the next step. Yeah, so. I appreciate that he's got like a long term perspective. Like mm -hmm. when he recruits yeah. people, like. Even with somebody who's been a pro like you, like he sees your potential. Like he doesn't yeah. necessarily see like a time that you've run already. Like when I graduated from college, I had a bad senior year. I was getting knee surgery. Like the sports marketing people didn't even know I was getting knee surgery. He told them like, "Oh yeah, Henry's getting knee surgery in two days." And they're like, Are "You serious?" <laughs> yeah. they're like we just signed him, and he's like, "Don't worry, it'll work out." <laughs> and since then, like PR in every event, like yeah. done so much better than I was in college. Like and that's like because he sees your potential. He sees how you can grow. It's not like. 
you're this time right now. If you don't run well, then you don't matter. It's like, yeah. I can see where you're going, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. Awesome. Can you put yeah. together a good team, too? I yeah. think like yeah. he also like environment. really appreciates like team bonding activities yeah. and like he, it's cool. It's cool. Like sometimes on the off season, we all go out with Danny. It's also fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. We do jujitsu with him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like go that. to his match in March. No, oh. we'll, we'll oh. be yeah. watch. I want to go see yeah. what he's about. He's a badass. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in a fight with him. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I would not. <laughs> want you to be in a fight with him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. 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 Wrap it up. Yeah. 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 Nice. Nice chat. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Get it up.